Bifrost Custom IK Solver. Before moving along, I wanted to talk about one more option for the uh, custom IK solver. So we build a IK solver with Maya default nodes, but you could also build this within uh, Bifrost. And Bifrost is a uh, visual node-based programming language or environment uh, within Maya. It's a default uh, shipped plugin, uh, so it's available for every uh, default install of Maya. And within Bifrost, you can create a Bifrost graph. <coughs> and a Bifrost graph is basically just uh, a shape node with a transform node. And within this shape node, you get a whole uh, graphing system. And uh, all the nodes inside the Bifrost uh, node are compiled into one uh, big piece of code. And in the my evaluation graph, uh, this whole node is evaluated as one uh, node so it's uh, scheduled to the cpu as one evaluation so if we look at the uh, input connections to the uh, bifrost shape i have the upper and lower length of the arm and i have the uh, the hand uh, ik control the upper fk control world matrix basically the, the matrix at the uh, shoulder position and the elbow uh, ik control world matrix uh, plugged into the bifrost shape as inputs and then it generates three outputs matrices, which are basically in the uh, world matrices for the upper, lower, and uh, hand uh, temporary locators. <coughs> so if we look inside the Bifrost graph, you can here see the input node with the input attributes and the output node with the output attributes and one compound, which is basically a, a subgraph uh, within the uh, Bifrost uh, node environment. So if we look inside this uh, node graph, uh, you can see the whole <coughs> Bifrost uh, graph, which produces the IK solver. It basically is the same setup as the uh, Maya node-based uh, solver, but then within the uh, Bifrost uh, environment. <coughs> I'm not going to make a, a Bifrost tutorial out of this. There are a lot of good uh, Bifrost tutorials um, if you're interested, but I'm going to step through it um, fairly quickly uh, to get an overview of this uh, setup. So uh, at this point, we can take a Bifrost matrix attribute and plug it into a, a value node with the correct type. And then we can access all the individual values in the matrix. So with this, I plug the uh, fourth row, so the translation vector into the uh, start boss uh, vector four to vector three node, which basically lets me uh, get the first three components of the uh, four dimensional uh, translation vector. So I get the position as a float three or double three uh, value in this case. And I do the same for the uh, end matrix. So I get the end pos and with the start position and the end position are basically the shoulder and the hand position. I can get the current length with a distance node. And if I add the upper length and lower length together, uh, I get the maximum length of the arm in its uh, straight position and then I use that to uh, clamp the current length to its maximum length with a min node <laughs> and then I have the uh, uh, distance of the arm, the current distance with a maximum of the maximum length. And then I have the upper length and lower length uh, scale nodes. These are now basically pass-through nodes, but I use this in another setup where I plugged in the uh, upper and lower scalar uh, for my soft IK setup. So this does not have the soft IK, it's just the regular IK setup. And these nodes are uh, doing nothing but passing through its value. Um, and if I rearrange this a little bit, I have the uh, upper uh, or the, the, the length of the arm and its squared value. So in the uh, cos law of cosine setup, it's the C uh, value and the C squared, and the upper length and the upper length squared, and the lower length and the lower length squared. So with these values, we can use the law of cosine to get the angles. Um, and here we are doing the uh, upper addition of the numerator of the law of cosines. So quickly recapping again, if we have our triangle with the A, B, and C, and we're solving for the angle B, we get the cosine of B being 
a squared plus c squared minus b squared divided by 2ac. So that's basically what we're doing here. We're adding the a squared plus b squared. Um, and then we subtract the b squared of it. And then we have the numerator, the upper part. And then we do 2, which is just a value node with a value of 2. And we add the uh, a and c to it. So it's the uh, current length and the uh, upper length. And then we divide these two, and then we get this part of the equation, which is the cosine of angle B. So the cosine value. And if we then uh, take the uh, clamped version, we clamp it to B minus 1 and 1 uh, because of uh, rounding errors or floating point or double precision errors, we can get sometimes value outside of this uh, range, and then uh, the graph uh, fails. So it's just to uh, keep everything working. Then we get the uh, cosine value uh, squared because we're going to use the uh, Pythagorean theorem to get the uh, sine value. So uh, we're going to draw here. We have the uh, cosine value, let's call it A, and we have the uh, height B, and we have the hypotenuse being C. So we're doing uh, C where the hypotenuse uh, has the length of 1 in this case. So again, we do subtract C squared minus uh, A squared, which is the cosine value squared. So we get the, uh, this gets the B squared, so the uh, sine value squared. And if we then take the square root, we get the sine value. And we use the cosine value, the sine value, and the negated sine value to construct a rotation matrix. And this rotation matrix is the uh, has the rotation angle of angle B. And if we then use a A matrix to construct the rotation plane orient matrix, and we the input matrix is basically just the uh, shoulder uh, matrix, and then we aim it towards the hand matrix, and we use the um, world matrix of the control, the elbow control, its y vector to align the uh, y axis. It's the same setup uh, as in the Maya node based setup, but this is a, a matrix within the Bifrost graph. So this produces the uh, orientation plane matrix, and then if we multiply it with the local matrix, we get the world uh, upper uh, arm matrix. One thing to note here is that Bifrost uses column uh, matrices instead of row matrices. So where in Maya, the X basis vector is the upper uh, row. Uh, in Bifrost, the X basis vector is the first column. So it's going in a uh, vertical direction. So this is basis vector X, this is the basis vector Y, this is the basis vector Z, and this is the translation vector. And because of this uh, um, using column matrices, the multiplication uh, order also flips in the matrix multiplication node. So where in the Maya multiplication uh, matrix mult node, the child is the first uh, input and the parent is the second input. In Bifrost, because of the column matrices, the parent is the first input and the child is the lowest input. So that's something to keep in mind. And then this produces the uh, world matrix of the upper arm. And then I plug it into the output. And the same for the lower uh, arm. I use the um, law of cosine to solve for the cosine value. And then again, I clamp it. And I square the cosine value to get the squared uh, sine value. And then I take the square root of the squared sine value and I have the sine value, and then I use that to construct the uh, local lower matrix, the rotation matrix. And because we uh, here in this lower side, we needed to, to uh, flip the angle or rotate the angle 180 degrees and then negate it. That's why we use a, a negation node on the cosine value, and the uh, negated sine is then flipped with the sine, normal sine value. So normally, you would, for to get a rotation matrix, you would put the negated sine into the basis vector yx, and the normal sine in the basis vector xy, 
but because we wanted to negate the uh, rotation and uh, rotate it 180 degrees, these connections are also uh, flipped. So this produces the local uh, rotation matrix, and then we multiply it with its parent matrix, which is the upper world matrix, to produce the lower world matrix, and that goes into the output as well. And then as a last uh, step, we create the uh, end, or hand in this case, uh, world matrix. And for this, we take a vector with the length of the lower arm. So we take the lower arm length and we plug it into a vector four node as the X component. And then we use a matrix multiply node to multiply a vector with a matrix. So we multiply the uh, lower arm length vector, so to speak, with the lower arm world matrix, which gets us a new uh, vector four, a new position in this case, and that position is at the hand. So now we have the world hand position, and then we use this hand world position to feed into a matrix to the translation vector, and we take the, uh, see the basis vector x, y, and z from the end matrix, and we plug them directly into the basis vector x, y, and z of the end world matrix. And this is because if we uh, st stretch the arm to a longer position than the maximum length, uh, and we uh, disable um, IK stretching, then the hand control is farther away than the maximum length of the arm. So we want to have the position that is clamped to the maximum length of the arm, but we do want to use the rotation and scale. So the basis vector x, y, and z have the scale, share, and rotation uh, within them. So we use those directly from the hand control, and then we override the translation that we calculated from the uh, IK solver. So even if there's no IK stretching, it will produce the right position. And then we have the world end matrix and we plug that into the output as well. And that is basically our uh, IK solver in Bifrost. And the reason that I wanted to show this is that mm, uh, Bifrost compiles all the nodes internally into one uh, piece of code. And then Maya evaluates this as one node in the my evaluation graph so the node overhead is uh, a lot less because it is doesn't have to schedule all these nodes individually it only has to schedule one node it is uh, faster uh, however it is not as fast if you were to create this as a c plus plus plugin because then it has the benefit of uh, running even faster within maya but we're not going to do that for now uh, but if you compare the speed of the uh, regular IK solver, like the Maya default IK solver, the Maya node-based uh, solver that we built, and this Bifrost solver, you can see that if I, I time them, I animate them in the exact same way with the exact same base rig, and I time them, you get the, you see that Bifrost by far the fastest, but with 350 microseconds, and the custom node-based uh, evaluator or solver we built took 390 and the Maya IK solver, the default IK solver, uh, took about 400 microseconds. So the difference is not very large, uh, it is faster, um, and it, it's a preference if you want to incorporate a Maya plugin like Bifrost into your rig. It is very well possible, it is supported by every Maya version, um, I think from Maya 20, 23 and upwards. There has been some changes in the Bifrost um, nodes, uh, from time to time, but I think from now on it will be quite stable and doesn't change the default notes anymore, so uh, the compatibility between, between versions will be uh, uh, quite okay. But of course you have to test this in a real-world scenario as well, because this is just an arm rig. Uh, with no other nodes, uh, so because the Bifrost node evaluates as one node, it cannot parallelize the nodes individually internally. So uh, if you may have a full rig with uh, two arms, two legs, and the body and the deformation going on, uh, the differences might change. Um, so I think in the end, 
uh, it doesn't really matter uh, which option you use. If you don't want to have, uh, have any uh, joints in your rig that are not used for skinning, then go for the custom setup. And if you don't mind, uh, you could use the Maya IK solver as well. It's In the end, it's a preference and you have to uh, check this within a complete rig, uh, what the speed difference is for that specific rig. And if it has an advantage to use uh, any one of those.